uh, dear all, in the earlier class, uh, we were discussing about most economical section for a rectangular section. Then we, we moved on to most economical section for a trapezoidal section. In my earlier lecture, I also mentioned about most economical section for a circular section. If you recall, uh, I said there are two conditions for a circular section. One is condition for maximum discharge. For that, we derived the equation in the earlier class. And the second one is condition for maximum velocity. So this also I derived in the, my earlier lecture, but I did some mistake in the earlier section. So I just want to correct that with reference to that, I am deriving this equation once again. So the title or the, uh, this is for condition for maximum velocity. So how I am going to start? So in the earlier case, it is, it is condition for maximum discharge. We consider the discharge equation Q is equal to A into V. And in place of V, we substituted this Chase's formula. Now, since we are talking about condition for maximum velocity, I consider the equation for this velocity. So for that, I consider this Chase's equation V is equal to C into root of R S. Now we know this R, hydraulic mean radius, is the ratio of weighted area to the weighted perimeter A divided by P. So in place of R, I am going to substitute this A divided by P. Therefore, this equation takes up the form V is equal to C into root of A divided by P into S. So in the next step, what I am going to do is I am squaring this equation on both sides. So if you square this equation on both sides, you are going to get V square is equal to C square into A divided by P into S. Now whatever the notations we used for the earlier derivation, the same notations holds good for this der derivation too. That is small d represents the diameter of the circular section and capital D represents the depth of flow in the circular section. Now, assuming chase is constant and the bed slope to be constant, the velocity is maximum when A divided by P is maximum. So what I am going to do is, in that equation 2, V square is equal to C square into A divided by P into S. In that equation, the C and S are constant. Therefore, I can write this equation as V square proportional to A divided by P or this V is proportional to A by P. So the conclusion we are going to draw is, so for maximum velocity, A divided by P or the hydraulic mean radius must be maximum. Now, to get an equation for this condition of for maximum velocity, differentiate this A divided by P with respect to theta and equate the same to zero. So if you do that, you are going to get, so differentiate this A divided by P with respect to theta, that is D of D, D theta of A divided by P, that is equal to, if you differentiate this A by P with respect to theta, you are going to get this P into DA by D theta minus A into dp by d theta whole thing divided by p square that is equal to 0. Since in the right hand side I have 0, so if you simplify this, you are going to get this p into dA by d theta minus a into dp by d theta that is equal to 0. Call this as equation number 3. Now if you look at this equation number 3, so you need the value of p perimeter so perimeter, weighted perimeter is given by r theta for a circular section. Weighted area A is given by r square by 2 into theta minus sin theta. But you need the value of dA by d theta and the dp by d theta. So what I am going to do is, I consider this weighted area equation A is equal to r square by 2 into theta minus sin theta. Differentiate this equation with respect to theta, you are going to get dA by d theta that is equal to r square by 2 into 1 minus cos theta. Similarly, this r, p is equal to r theta, differentiate this p with respect to theta, you are going to get 
dp by d theta is equal to r. Now, if you consider the equation 3, you know the value of p, you know the value of a, you know the value of dA by d theta and dp by d theta. Substitute all these values and solve for theta, you are going to get the value of theta works out to be 302 degree. So once you find the value of theta, find this capital D, the depth of flow in the channel, so for maximum velocity and the depth of flow for maximum velocity works out to be 0 0.94 times the diameter of the circular section. So for maximum velocity, theta is 302 degree and the depth of flow y or it is also represented as capital D with respect to the figure what we presented that works out to be 0 0.94 D. So this completes the theory portion as far as this most economical sections are concerned. Let us solve a couple of problems on this most economical sections then we will move forward. The first problem goes like this. A V-shaped open channel carries water at a rate of 0 0.1 meter cube per second when the depth of water is 1.2 meter. Each side of the channel is inclined at 45 degree to the horizontal. Find the slope of the channel along the flow direction. Take Chase's constant C is equal to 5, 0. So please refer to the figure. So in this case, this is a triangular channel. The depth of flow in the channel is 1.2 meters. The discharge in the channel is 0 0.1 meter cube per second. And the side slopes make an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal. First, note down the data given in the problem. So what is given? Discharge is given 0 0.1 meter cube per second. The depth of water flowing in the channel is given, that is h is equal to 1.2 meter. Now, flow through the channel is given by q is equal to a into v. Now, in this case, Chase's constant is given in the problem. Therefore, for velocity, we use this Chase's equation. This q is equal to ac into root of rs. Now, if you look at this equation, you need the wetted area, A is the wetted area, R is the hydraulic radius. Okay, our aim is to find the value of S, bed slope. Now, in order to find the value of this A and C, we need the wetted area as well as we need to calculate the hydraulic mean radius. Let us see how to do that. Now, consider the figure. From the figure, OC is equal to the depth of water flowing in the channel that is given by capital H. Now, from the geometry of the figure, tan 45 is equal to CB divided by OC. Tan 45 is equal to CB divided by OC. I want the value of CB because I want the top width. So, CB is equal to OC tan 45. But what is OC? OC is 1.2 meter given in the problem. Therefore, CB works out to be 1.2 into tan 45 that is equal to 1.2 meter. So, if you consider the triangle OCB, CB is 1.2 meter and OC is 1.2 meter. Therefore, find the area of flow section. Area of flow section is given by half into AB, the top width, into H, the depth of flow in the channel. So that works out to be half into 2 times CB into H. Substitute the values. A is equal to half into 2 times into CB is 1.2 meters. Therefore, substitute 1.2 into h is 1.2 given the problem. If you simplify this, you are going to get weighted area A is equal to 1.44 meter square. Now, what is R? R is hydraulic mean radius. 
that is equal to a divided by p. Just now you determined the value of a. Now you need to determine the value of p in order to find the value of r. For this triangular section, what is the value of p? So p is given by AO plus OB. Now we need to find either OB or OA. Again consider the uh, triangle OCB. From the triangle OCB, this OB, the hypotenuse is equal to, so OB square is equal to OC square plus CB square. Now OC is 1.2, CB is 1.2, therefore this OB square is equal to 1.2 square plus 1.2 square. And AB works out to be, OB works out to be 1.7 meter. Therefore, weighted perimeter P is equal to OA plus OB that is equal to 2 times 1.7 uh, that is OB. So, if you simplify that, the weighted perimeter works out to be 3.4 meter. Now, R is equal to A divided by P. A is 1.44 and P is 3.40. Therefore, R is equal to 0 0.42 meter. Now, in the equation Q is equal to AC into root of RS. Now, we know the value of Q. We determine the value of A. We determine the value of R. C is given in the problem. The unknown is yes. Therefore, substitute the value and find the value of yes. So, yes works out to be 1 over 217728. Okay, this is the slope of this triangular section. Very simple problem. Now, we will go to the next problem. Problem goes like this. The base width of a trapezoidal channel section is 5 meters and the side slopes are 1 is to 2. The depth of water is 2.5 meter. Find the discharge through the channel using Chase's constant as phi 0 and the bed slope of the channel as 1 in 1000. Again, please refer to the figure and for every problem you need to write a figure. Please refer to this figure. From the figure, this base width AB is equal to 5 meters and the depth of flow is 2.5 meters. Therefore, AE is equal to BF is equal to 2.5 meters. Chase's constant C is equal to phi 0 given in the problem. The bed slope of the channel is capital S is equal to 1 in 1000. Then coming to the side slope of the channel. So for every one vertical, there is two horizontal. Therefore, my value of N is equal to 2. With this, let us start solving this problem. For a trapezoidal section, weighted area A is given by B plus NY into Y. So, B is given 5 meter plus. So, N, the horizontal, uh, the side slope, N is equal to 2. Therefore, 2 into the depth of flow is 2.5 into 2.5. Therefore, that works out to be 25 meter square. Weighted area is 25 meter square. Similarly, find the weighted perimeter. The weighted perimeter P is given by B plus 2Y into root of N square plus 1. Again, B is 5 meters, depth of flow is 2.5 and N is 2. Substitute the values and find the value of P. So, P is equal to 9.48 meter. You know the value of A. Now, we determine the value of P. Therefore, find the value of R. R is equal to A divided by P. That is equal to 
25 divided by 9.48 that works out to be 2.64 meters. Now, consider this discharge equation Q is equal to A into V. Again, in place of V, so substitute this C into root of RS because change is constant is given in the problem. Therefore, Q is equal to AC into root of R into S. So, A is 25, change is constant is 50, into R is 2.64, into the bit slope that is 1 over 1000. Substitute all the values and find the value of Q and uh, Q on simplification uh, uh, will get 64.2 meter cube per second. Then, we will go to the next problem. This is about the most economical section. Problem goes like this. A most efficient trapezoidal section is required to give a maximum discharge of 21.5 meter cube per second of water. The slope of the channel bottom is 1 in 2500. Taking Chase's constant C as 70 in Chase's equation, determine the dimensions of the channel. Also determine the value of the Manning square constant taking the value of the velocity of flow as obtained for the channel by Chase's equation. Now, if you take out previous question papers, sometime you will see this type of problem. Let us see how to solve this problem. So, first note down what is the data given in the problem. So, Q is given 21.5 meter cube per second. The bed slope of the channel S is 1 in 2500 and Chase's constant C is equal to 7, 0. Now, first note down the conditions for most economical trapezoidal section. What are the conditions for most economical trapezoidal section? If you recall, I gave three conditions. First one, B plus 2NY that is equal to 2Y into root of N square plus 1. This is the first condition. The second condition is hydraulic mean radius R is equal to Y divided by 2. The third condition is okay, regarding the side slope. So, N is equal to 1 over root of 3. These are the three equations. Okay. So, I mentioned two about two equations here. You can write another equation also that is R is equal to Y divided by 2. Now, for most economical section, the value of N is equal to 1 over root 3. So, with that, we we'll substitute this value of N is equal to 1 over root 3 in that most economical section equation B plus 2 NY is equal to 2 Y into root of n square plus 1. So, wherever n is there, you substitute the value of 1 over root 3 and simplify that. If you simplify that, you are going to get b plus 2 into 1 over root 3 into y that is equal to 2y into root of 4 divided by 3. Or that ends further simplification so, we are going to get b by y is equal to 2 divided by root of 3. So, b is equal to 1.55 times y. This is a relation for a most economical section. So, as far as this proposal section is concerned. So, what is the conclusion we are going to draw? The conclusion we are going to draw is the bed width is 1.55 times the depth of flow. At this point, 
consider the Chase's formula. Chase's formula is given by Q is equal to A into B, and in place of B, we substitute this C into root of R S. Therefore, Chase's formula becomes Q is equal to A C into root of R S. Substitute the values. So Q given in the problem twenty one point five. That is equal to I don't know the weighted area. So keep that as it is. A into the value of C given in the problem has seven zero into root of R into S. Now in place of A, now you substitute what is this weighted area equation that is given by B plus N Y into Y. Therefore, A is equal to okay. So and we we know one more relation. That is B is equal to 1.55 Y. Therefore, in place of B, if we substitute 1.55 Y and simplify that, we are going to get this A is equal to 1.55 Y plus 1 over root 3 into Y, whole thing multiplied by Y. Therefore, the weighted area is equal to 1.73 Y square. In the earlier step, we derived a relation between the base width and the depth of flow. Now, in this step, we derived a relation between weighted area and the depth of flow. So, B is equal to 1.55 times Y, and A is equal to 1.73 Y square. Now, consider the perimeter equation. The perimeter equation for a trestle section is given by P is equal to B plus 2Y into root of n square plus 1. Therefore, P is equal to B plus 2Y into in place of n, I am going to substitute 1 over root 3. So it is 1 over root 3 square plus 1. So if you simplify this, you are going to get one more relation. The relation is this perimeter is equal to 3.47 times the depth of flow. P is equal to 3.47 y. Now you know the value of a, you know the value of p. Now find the value of r. R is equal to a divided by p. What is a? A is 1.73 y square. What is p? P is 3.47 y. So 1.73 y square divided by 3.47 y. You are going to get the value of r is equal to y divided by 2. Okay. Then consider that equation, discharge equation. Q is equal to so a c into root of r s. Now Q is 21.5. That is equal to A is 1.373 y square into so value of C is 70 into so R is y by 2 into 1 by 2000. So whole thing under square root. So if you look at this equation, the only unknown is y. Solve for y. So y works out to be 2.75 meter. So once you get the value of y, find the value of b. So b is equal to 1.16 y. Therefore, b is equal to 1.16 into 2.75. So the base width of the channel is 3.19 meter. First part of the problem is over. The second part of the problem is you need to find Manning's coefficient. For that, you find the value of C using the Chase's form. Uh, find the value of V using the Chase's equation. V is equal to C into root of R S. C is 70, and R is so Y is 2.75 divided by 2. 2.75 by 2 into 1 over 2500. If we simplify this, you are going to get the velocity has 1.64 meter per second. Now, 
with this velocity find the mannings roughness coefficient so mannings equation is given by 1 over n s to the power of half r to the power of 2 thirds now v is 1.64 so the unknown is the mannings roughness coefficient which i keep it as it is 1 over n into the bed slope is 1 in 2500 that tries to half into the hydraulic mean radius is 2.75 by 2 raised to 2 thirds so if you simplify this you are going to get the mannings roughness coefficient as 0.05 we'll go to the next problem problem goes like this a trapezoidal section channel having a cross sectional area a1 weighted perimeter p1 mannings coefficient n laid at a slope s carries a certain discharge q at a depth of flow equal to d to increase the discharge the base metal of a channel is widened by x keeping all other parameters that is the bed slope depth of flow d side slope and n the same prove that q2 by q1 whole cube into 1 plus x divided by p1 whole square that is equal to 1 plus x d divided by a1 whole thing raised to 5 where q2 is the new discharge in the channel so the even though the problem looks very complicated the solution is very simple don't be panic looking at the uh, problem let us see how to solve this problem how do i say this solution is very simple probably if you see couple of steps you yourself will realize so the solution getting a solution for this problem is very easy let us solve this problem let capital b the initial base width of the channel having the side slope z horizontal to one vertical z horizontal to one vertical corresponding to this write the weighted area equation so a1 is equal to b plus z d into d b plus n y into uh, y in place of n now i wrote z and in place of y i represent this depth as d because that is a notation given in the problem similarly write the equation for this perimeter so p1 is equal to b plus 2d into root of n square plus 1 what is the general equation for this weighted perimeter b plus 2y into root of n square plus 1 this is the first condition the next condition is when the base width is increased by x we in the first initial case or in the first case we assume the base width as capital b now this b is increased by x when you increase the base width by x naturally you have a new weighted area and a new weighted perimeter let us find the new weighted area and new weighted perimeter a2 is equal to b plus n y into y now right now the base width is b plus x plus z d into d so if you simplify this and compare this with a1 you are going to get how i am going to write this a2 as a1 plus z d there is a typo there ah uh, sorry x d there is uh, so a2 is equal to a1 plus x d so call this as equation number 
Similarly, write the equation for P2. So P2 is so B plus X plus 2D into root of N square plus 1. Therefore, P2 is equal to P1 plus X. So what I did, I assumed the base width as capital B. I wrote the general equations for the first case. A1 is equal to B plus ZT into D. Similarly, P1 is equal to B plus 2D into root of N square plus 1. In the second case, the base width is increased by X. When you increase the base width by X, naturally you have a new value of weighted area and a new value of weighted perimeter. Therefore, A2 is equal to B plus X plus ZD into D. So, if you compare this A2 with A1, A2 can be written as A1 plus XD. Call this as equation number 1. Similarly, this P2 is equal to B plus X plus 2D into root of N square plus 1 or P2 is equal to P1 plus X. Call this as equation number 2. Now, discharge Q1 is given by A1V or A1V1. Now, this Q1 is equal to, so in place of V, I am going to write Manning's formula. So, what is Manning's formula? 1 over n, s to the power of half, r to the power of 2 thirds. So, in place of r, if I replace this r by a by p, then the equation becomes, so q1 is equal to 1 over n, a1 into a1 by p1 whole thing raised to 2 thirds into s raised to half. We call this as equation number 3. Similarly, write q2, q2 is equal to 1 over n, a2 raised to 5 by 3 divided by p2 raised to 2 thirds into s raised to half. Call this as equation number 4. Now, once you get equation 3 and equation 4, divide equation 4 by equation 3. And on simplification, we get Q2 by Q1 is equal to 1 over n into A2 raised to 5 by 3 divided by P2 raised to 2 thirds into S raised to half. Whole thing divided by 1 over n, A1 raised to 5 by 3 divided by P1 raised to 2 thirds into S raised to half. If you look at this equation, 1 over n, 1 over n, 1 over n gets cancelled. S raised to half in the numerator, S raised to half in the denominator gets cancelled. So you are left with Q2 by Q1 is equal to A2 raised to 5 by 3 divided by P2 raised to 2 thirds. Whole thing multiplied by uh, divided by A1 raised to 5 by 3 divided by P1 raised to 2 thirds. So, if you rearrange these terms, you are going to get this Q2 by Q1 is equal to A2 raised to 5 by 3 divided by P2 raised to 2 thirds into this P1 raised to 2 thirds divided by A1 raised to 5 by 3. Or, if you, if you further simplify it, you are going to get Q2 by Q1 whole cube that is equal to A2 by A1 raised to 5 whole thing divided by P1 by P2 square. At this stage, in place of A2, you write this A1 plus XD, P2 is P1 plus X. So, substitute this value and on simplification, and rearranging the terms, 
you are going to get the required equation. The required equation is q2 by q1 cube into 1 by 1 plus x divided by p1 whole square plus 1 plus xd divided by a1 raised to 5. That's about this problem. Then we will go to the next problem. Problem goes like this. A rectangular channel 5.4 meter wide and 1.2 meter deep has a slope of 1 in 1000 and is lined with good rubble masonry for which Manning's roughness coefficient n is 0 0.017. It is designed to increase the discharge to a maximum by changing the channel slope or the form of the section. The dimensions of the section may be changed, but the channel must contain the same amount of lining. Compute the new dimensions and the probable increase in the discharge. Most of the time, you will see this problem in the examination. Let us see how to solve this problem. First, note down the given data in the problem. So, B1, the base width of the channel, 5.4 meter given in the problem. The depth of flow Y1 is 1.2. The bed slope is 1 in 1000. Manning's roughness coefficient N is equal to 0 0.017. Now, let us start with the basics. Q is equal to A into V and in place of V, I substitute this Manning's formula 1 over N, S to the power of half R to the power of 2 thirds. Therefore, Q1 is equal to 1 over N into A1 into R1 rise to 2 thirds into S rise to half. It is a rectangular channel. Find the wetted area. A1 is equal to 5.4 the base width into depth of flow 1.2. Therefore, A1 is equal to 6.48 meter square. Similarly, find the value of weighted perimeter P1. So, P1 is equal to B plus 2Y 5.4 plus 2 into 1.2. Therefore, perimeter P1 is equal to 7.8 meter. Find the hydraulic mean radius R1. R1 is equal to A1 by P1. Therefore, 6.48 divided by 7.8 that is equal to 0 0.83 meter. Now, if you substitute these values in the discharge equation, so on simplification, we are going to get the value of Q1 as 10.65 meter cube per second. This is the first part of the problem. Coming to the second part of the problem. Let B2 and Y2 be the bottom width and the depth of flow respectively for the new suction. In order to have the same amount of lining as in the previous case, we have perimeter P2 is equal to perimeter P1. Perimeter P1 we already calculated that works out to be 7.8 meter. Since P1 is equal to P2 is equal to 7.8, we are going to use this relation. Then since one would look for maximum discharge for a rectangular section. So for most economical rectangular section, the condition is the base width of the channel is two times the depth of flow. Therefore, B2 is equal to 2Y2. Therefore, weighted area A2 is equal to weighted area A2 is equal to so B2 into Y2 that is one condition. Let us talk about the other condition perimeter P2 is equal to B2 plus 2Y2. Since I know the value of this perimeter, 
I will make use of the second equation. So, perimeter P2 is equal to P1 is equal to 7.8 that is equal to B2 plus 2Y2. But what is the condition for this most economical section? The condition for most economical section is B2 is equal to 2Y2. So, in place of B2, I am going to substitute 2Y2. Therefore, this equation becomes 7.8 is equal to 2y2 plus 2y2. Find the value of y2. So, y2 is equal to 7.8 divided by 4. So, y2 works out to be 1.95 meter. So, once we get the value of y2, find the value of b2. So, b2 is equal to 2y2. Therefore, b2 works out to be 3.90 meter. Corresponding to this, find the weighted area. So, A2 is equal to B2 into Y2. B2 is 3.9, Y2 is 1.95. Therefore, A2 is equal to 7.61 meter square. Corresponding to this, let us find the value of R2. So, R2 is equal to A2 divided by P2 that works out to be 7.61 divided by 7.80 that is equal to 0 0.975 meter. So, once we get this value of R2, now consider the discharge equation once, once again corresponding to this section 2 that becomes Q2 is equal to 1 over N A2 into R2 raised to 2 thirds into S raised to half. Substitute all the values and the find, find the value of Q2. So, Q2 works out to be 13.91 meter cube per second. You already calculated the value of Q1. Now, you determine the value of Q2. Now, with this value of Q1 and Q2, let us see uh, the percentage change. So, probable increase in the discharge is given by Q2 minus Q1 that is equal to 13.91 minus 10.65 that is equal to 3.26 meter cube per second. Percentage increase in discharge that is given, give, given by Q2 minus Q1 whole thing divided by Q1. So, 3.26 divided by 10.65. So, percentage increase in discharge works out to be 30.61 percent.